Hello, welcome back to the final session of our course Exploring Trees and Hedgerows. Today we're going to be um, looking at techniques from sessions one and two again, but this time we're going to be putting them together to create a bluebell bank. Now, I'm just going to show you a few samples of some of the paintings I've done using these techniques. Um, so a few, again, we're going to be using straws and sticks to sort of create a hedgerow effect and then we're going to be letting the paint sort of run and flow and doing some splatters to create a, a sort of a bank of bluebells coming down underneath. Um, this is another one with a slightly brighter sky and a few little sort of hints of foliage on the trees. And this one's a lighter one that's got sort of a, a light, a deliberately left a light area with sun, sort of sun streaming through, which is I think I quite like, which I think I'm going to do with this sort of picture again with some light shining through, which I quite like. Now I'm going to talk to you about colours. I've done a, a little colour chart here to try out colours for, which um, bluebells are really quite a difficult colour um, to recreate because they're such a unique sort of violety colour, sort of a blue. But if you use ultramarine um, blue, cobalt blue and cerulean blue um, and a violet would work really well. If you haven't got a violet, if you could use a little bit of rose madder mixed with cobalt blue to make it make a slightly more purpley colour would work fine. Also for doing the trees and the hedgerow, you will need um, some Prussian blue and some burnt umber. Also a little bit of lemon yellow to create some greens and some light if you want some light shining through. OK, so I'll get my paints ready and I'll show you what we do next. Now, I have just drawn a very light pencil line where I want the bank, my bank to start. And then this area is going to be my sky up here. So I'm going to wet, thoroughly wet this area that's going to be the sky. Just like we did in session three. Thoroughly wet that and you could decide what colour blue you would like your sky to be. Cerulean blue will be nice and bright and summery. Or if you use cobalt or ultramarine, you'll be slightly darker blue. Again, I'm going to tilt my paper just to check I haven't got any dry patches and I have. You can't tell unless you hold them to the light and you can see that it's not shiny. There, thoroughly wet that. Now, I'm going to deliberately leave a light patch in the middle of my sky on this one. So, I'm also going to add a little tiny little bit of yellow into the sky in the centre to give like a little bit of light shining through, like a bright sunshine effect, hopefully. So, I'm going to use some cerulean blue. And because I want to leave the centre quite light, I'm just going to drag it through like this and actually leave the centre area lighter. Okay, that. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to a little bit of lemon yellow, I'm going to dilute that slightly so it's not too strong just to add a little tiny touch of that into the sky area. Just a little bit of suggestion of some brightness in the sky. You don't want too much or you're going to end up with green, which is not what you want at the moment. So just adding a little tiny little touch there. That will do. And then what I'm going to do is get a tissue. I'm going to lift out some clouds. sky on this one. I've left that middle section nice and bright and light. Now I need to dry this off and then we can start doing top of the hedge. Okay I've dried the sky off and now I'm going to start working and letting paint run down here onto the bank. So what I'm going to do actually to encourage that I'm going to wet now the bottom section. The reason I wanted to dry the sky off first is because if the sky is wet 
when you start applying wet paint down here that will seep, might seep up into the sky and that's not what you want so if that top is dry it acts as a bit of a barrier and stops it really running too much where you don't want it to go right so wet that bottom bit i'm going to start off by having some cobalt blue at the top um, and i'm going to start letting that build up a little bit and run down and I'm just going to coming in here and actually do putting some of this colours down and we're going to start letting this run down a little bit and then I'm going to start coming in I'm going to leave the centre a little bit lighter still I'm just going to sort of use the side of my brush to move the paint around slightly and I'm going to come from the bottom I'm going to put some ultramarine blue just because it's slightly more purpley of blue and I'm going to have try and have the bottom here a little bit more purpley and the top slightly more blue looking um, I'll leave that centre because I'm going to have some sun, bright sunlight in that area that's the plan what I'm now going to do is I'm going to get some cerulean blue and I'm going to start putting that in and we're going to start letting the paint run a little bit so I'm going to move the paint so it's all about letting it run about a bit now I'm going to let that trickle and run a little bit down my page. That's the plan. Start moving that diagonally a little bit. And I'm going to start adding some <clears throat> some of the colours that I want in this centre area. So I want some lighter areas in here. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of lemon yellow. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start building up the colour. So a bit more cerulean. And I'm going to start allowing that to just run, run down. That's the plan. So one colour is merging and bleeding into the other colour. Just letting it run backwards and forwards slightly. So colours soften and merge. Now I'm going to come in and actually add some colours to the top of the bank slightly, okay? Now I'm going to be putting in a little bit of green on the top of the bank, that's what I need. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of yellow up here, just so I'm going to start getting some greens coming in. Just some gestures of some green and again I can start letting that just slightly run run and trickle down just let it move from side to side don't worry if it looks a bit splodgy at this stage that's fine <laughs> we're going to build this up in layers it's not just going to be one layer I just let it build up slightly that's it so I've got a little bit of green a suggestion of some greens now on the top which is absolutely fine come in and add just a little bit more here not too bright but and again I'm going to start letting that run move it around so I quite like letting it run diagonally slightly diagonally so what I'm going to do is get some water and just drop a little bit of water on it that's it 
that will just make that move a bit. There we go. You can see that paint sliding across the page. That's better. Got a bit of movement. I'm going to do the same on this side. And I allow it to move that way. Just so. That's it. What I'm trying to get that's better. Get the paint to merge very slightly, one one colour from another, so you get a bit more of a softness going on. That's it. So what I'm going to do is quite wet at the moment, but I'm going to start introducing some darker blues and purples now. <clears throat> so I'm going to come in with a bit more of the cobalt blue at the top here and I'm going to let start letting that run down I'm going to leave the very top there because I want that to be green okay so I'm going to leave that as it is and I'm going to come in put a bit of water and encourage that to run <clears throat> and what's happening it's starting to granulate and break up a little bit as it's merging which is quite nice it gives you a nice effect and what I'm going to do is here just hold a tissue to catch your drips catch your drips at the bottom of the page all right as they start to run down that's it and we'll do something similar on the other side again I'm going to get a little bit of cobalt here just put a little bit on encourage that to run again so I'm going to encourage that to run this way. It's not going to run, just put a bit of water on it if it's... That's it. I'm starting to get some different effect. Hopefully you can see I'm starting to get like little rib rivets of colour coming through. Now I'm going to do some ultramarine near the bottom again i'm going to try and encourage that to run again i need a drop a bit of water on it if it's not going to do what it's want it to later on well, i'm going to put some splatters on top of this as well to add extra color but at this stage i'm just trying to get an impression of some different blues, different tones of blues coming through. Again, hold a tissue here to catch my drips. And that's starting to build up quite a nice surface. So I'm now going to come in, I'm going to start adding some purple in here a little bit. So I'm going to get Purple and start letting that little that run down. So I'm going to come from about here and start putting some purples in. And I'm going to let that run and blend the rest of the colours. I'm just going to put some water on it. That's better. Break it up a little bit. That will encourage it to move around a bit more. That's created quite a nice sort of seam of purple there, which I rather like. Sorry, I'm trying to do it so you can't see. <laughs> and just let it run and merge. Hold that down to let it run a little bit further down. I wait till it come, be a bit patient, and let it run all the way down. Then I'm going to do the other side. Yeah. Come in and do the other side now. It's a purple there. Then again, I'm going to encourage that to run. A 
bits of water and then that should move about a bit more. some nice little speckles of of a uh, purple in there so what I'm going to do now it's getting a little bit wet and sludgy so I need to just give it a moment to start to dry off a little bit and then I'm going to come in and add some more color so I'm going to dry that off a little bit and then come back okay I've dried that off now what I'm going to do I'm going to start building up the bank area and blowing and making creating some little sort of hedgerow trees for the next stage so I'm going to use some of the burnt umber and a little bit of Prussian blue and I'm going to do one work my way along and I'm going to do some trees and then I'm going to block them so they're actually fairly pale um, I'm actually going to dilute this paint quite a lot actually so I'm going to make them so they're a bit more in the distance and then I'm going to do some a little bit more definite near the front that's the plan sorry I can get my hair in the picture um, it's just a small section at a time. My straw. And using my stick while it's still wet. <clears throat> Strange shape, isn't it? So, some little bits coming off of that one. I need to just have something else coming off here because that looks a little bit odd. That one, there we are. A bit more definite shape. Okay, what I'm going to now do is I'm going to very lightly block that just so that just makes it a little, little bit paler. And that's going to hopefully look like it's in the slightly further away. Okay. So I'm going to carry on all the way along and do that and blot it. Now I've worked my way all the way along and blown and, and done sort of distant hedgerow, as you can see. I've blotted it each time so it's quite pale. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to build this up and a bit like this one here going to add, using a stick, going to add some slightly more definite, darker trees that will look like they're in the foreground. Okay, so I'm going to be using my burnt umber and the Prussian blue again. And you could, if you prefer, you could do this just by blowing with a straw if you'd rather. But I thought I'd try and... So I'm going to start down here and actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will actually build up the bank very slightly underneath, but I'll do that next. Sorry, right, I am going to come in and start adding some slightly more defined tree shapes in here. I might start them until they come slightly lower down. It's up to you how large you want these to be. I don't want mine to be too big. Keep them in a bit proportion. showing up a bit more. I will go over this and put a little bit of Prussian blue in here in a moment. Just getting the overall shape first. Yeah. 
and then I might just give a few suggestions of some roots. And what I'm going to do later, I'm going to bring some paint down and actually make this sort of some of the paint run a little bit down here as well. So it'll run down a little bit. So I'm going to come in and actually just do a little bit of Prussian blue in here as well. Just a touch. Just like we have when we were doing the other trees. Fine, the shape of that one, I think. What I'm going to do, I'm going to work my way along and put a few more definite trees along here. And as you can see, I have carried my way along and actually built up some darker trees um, so they look as if they're a bit more in the foreground. I've actually also dropped the base of the tree slightly lower so they look as if they're a bit nearer. So I've dried this off and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually build the bank up a little bit. Um, as you can see on this one here, um, the bank here built up a little bit more and I'm going to allow the colours to, from the bank then to run down. OK, so I'm just going to work my way and I'm going to use <clears throat> some of the brown again, some of the burnt umber. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to just bring this down a little bit. Not too much. I don't want it to dominate too much but what I'm going to do is then touch that with clean water so I'm going to get some water and just touch these areas and allow those to run a little bit and merge so again I'm going to just let those colours just slightly run down just a little bit into the into the area of the picture just to soften that off a little bit there we are and I'm just going to do the same on this side. Just bring those some of these. Some touches of brown there. And I'm going to allow that to run down and trickle a little bit into this other area of the picture. Just so there we are. As you can see, it's starting to trickle down a little bit. Just maybe give the impression slightly of roots of the trees. Just bring that down a tiny bit. That's it. That sort of merged it in more, rather. So, so it's again bedded it in rather than it just sort of sitting on the top there. And I think I need to do something now with this one here as well. So what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to something similar, but I don't want it to too, too dark. So I'm going to a little bit more brown in here, but I'm also going to I mean, have some yellow, a little tiny touches, some yellow in there, so allow that to run down. And I'm also going to go in with a little tiny touch of um, cerulean blue, so I've got a few touches of green, I think, in there. I don't want it to be too dark, so again, all clean water. And I'm going to come down right down here where I want it to be and then I'm going to come up and touch touch that paint and hopefully allow that to run and flow down a little bit into the landscape so it's gonna and then I'm going to allow that to run down so I'm going to let that flow down so I've got some color flowing down here Encourage that to run a little bit more. There we are. I'm happy with that one. So I just dab there a little bit. That's it. So, I've, and that's just brought that down so it's not quite so separate. And I think I might just need to do that a tiny, tiny bit more. 
So I don't want to do it too much, just on those edges. I think I might need to bring that brown down a little bit. That's better. That's just making it slightly more integrated now, rather than being separate. There as well, I think it needs to sit. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to work back over the lavender bank a little bit. So, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get my palette knife and I'm going to do some more splattering. Okay, so I'm going to use um, some different shades of blue and the violet. I'm going to start off with ultramarine blue and I'm going to do some splatters and I'm going to, in a little while, I'm going to add some water to this and let them run a little bit. You'll find if you look at a bluebell wood, you will actually see that the splattering works quite well because you do get a range of different blues and sort of purple colours, violets, depending on the light really, where the light's shining. Whoops, no, I've forgotten to do. I need to put a bit of tissue on my sky. Just realised I'd quickly do that. <laughs> Just going to see, I can get, I've got some splatters there accidentally, which I didn't want, never mind. Right, so quickly do that. I'm also going to get some cobalt blue, put a few, few little spots of cobalt on. And I'm going to get some violet coming down a little bit through that light area as well. Just to break it up a little bit, a tiny bit more. There we are. So what I'm now going to do is get some clean water on my palette knife and I'm going to, like when I did the blossom on the tree last time, I'm going to be splodging. This will help the paint move around a little bit and diffuse. You can do this by just loading a brush with water and sort of tapping it would be fine as well if you haven't got palette knife. some water on, get it to move around a little tiny bit more. That's good. Right, what I'm going to now do is I'm going to move the paper and see if I can get that to just slightly run. To run a little bit downwards, so what I'm going to do, I might even drop some water on a couple of areas, just to encourage some of it to run a little bit. That's it. Not everywhere, but just in a few places to break it up a little bit. It just merges a little bit more. And that one colour blends slightly with another, which is quite nice. to break that up it looks a little bit uniform there catch your drips with some water at the bottom now just have sort of stand back have a little look see if you're happy Let the paint run a little tiny bit more Let it merge around a little bit there we are if you get any areas that are puddling just dab with the tissue lightly to remove so you haven't got don't want any paint to sort of merge too much and go muddy I think I might just put a tiny little bit of cerulean blue back in the top area but get enough bit of tissue and put over my sky again just here, I'm just going to put a few little touches of a slightly lighter blue. Just to lift it a little bit. Just coming down from that top area. Yeah, that's quite nice, I think. That's 
so okay and again a little tiny bit of water on that to see if i can get that to run and merge a little bit more just there lovely so what i'm going to do now is just see if i can let that move a little bit touch that one a little bit more. there we are and i think we're done for that part that part now I have dried the bottom area off and um, if you know you can carry on splattering and letting the paint run as, as much as you like until you're happy with your colours. I'm going to now cover that area as I've dried it off and I'm going to be splattering putting to put some foliage on the trees okay. So I'm going to be using shades of blue and the yellow so I'm going to use cerulean blue, cobalt blue and the lemon yellow. I'm going to splatter and then put water on to create some foliage. Um, obviously remember bluebells it's lovely springtime so we want the blues the, the greens to be quite nice and bright. So try not to go too mad with this then. And everywhere. So this is the cobalt blue and I'm going to put some cerulean on. This is just so that I can create different shades of green, really, um, rather than a uniform colour. Okay, so that's that one. I'm now going to come in with some cerulean, much brighter blue, and then the yellow to make the greens. Or you can just do you splatter different shades of green straight away if you like to. I prefer to mix my own greens with the blues and yellows. I think you get a nicer range. I'm getting splatters up in my sky, which I should have covered up, shouldn't I? Dear. I'll quickly do that now so it doesn't get any worse. Just do put a little bit there just to stop that going everywhere. Right, yellow now. And this should then turn these blues into lovely bright spring greens. Right, now get some water and I'm going to then oops, realize a little bit there. Start just flicking a bit of water around to make those paints blend a little bit more together. So here is my final finished painting. Um, it's all dry now. I've taken the tape off, which always improves the look of the painting. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, have a lot of fun with it. And I'm just going to show you a couple of others that I've done previously, that are slightly different versions to show you as well. So I showed you those at the beginning, but I just did a little recap. So there's this one here, which is actually hasn't got so much detail on the trees, but it's got some really nice sort of runs and textures on, on down the bank. Another one where I've had the light coming through. This one, the light's a little bit stronger on this one, as you can see. And finally, this one, where I've actually made the bank quite, a, I've actually put lots of speckles of yellow actually here as well, to sort of help merge merge those ones in there. So I hope you've enjoyed the course. Um, if you have, it'd be great if you could either send some pictures to the Facebook page, also fill out some feedback for us. And is going to make an announcement about feedback in a moment. Thank you. Bye bye. If you've enjoyed this course, please fill in the feedback form on our website to help show our funders these courses are valuable. Details coming up now. Bye.